Grazers and welcome to this little two video series that we're going to do on um, preparing pizza for cooking on the trail. Um, this is not something that I have ever done before. Um, you know, sometimes I will come and show you things that I'm very familiar with and that's one kind of video. Another kind of video that I do is we kind of do it together in an experiment to see if it's going to work. I make homemade pizza. I've done it for years, but when we're on the trail, the situation is different. Therefore, our process is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to be doing some experimenting and ultimately we're going to do two videos. Today we're going to do the sauce and then the next one we're going to do the crust. And after we get the crust uh, done, then we're going to go ahead and put together some pizzas on that same video to see if our experiment is a success. I'm going to share with you my pizza sauce recipe and it is so easy. Um, now I always make the pizza sauce at the same time we're going to have pizza. And so if I wanted to preserve it in any way, there are two things that we can do. We can either freeze it or we can dry it. And by drying it, we can either put it in a dehydrator or in a freeze dryer. And so with the sauce today, I am going to get it in the freeze dryer. Tonight we'll put it in the regular freezer and then tomorrow morning we'll move it into the freeze dryer and then we will be back after the freeze dryer has finished and I'll bring it in. That way we can powder it or, or chunk it up however we might want to and I can take only the amount, this is my thinking, um, we'll see if it works, I can take only the amount that we will need on the trail instead of taking a jar like this or I could also freeze just the amount that we will need on the trail and then when we get ready to go I'll put it in the ice chest and it will thaw over a day or two and then we can use it when it is thawed and ready to go. I'm using my little butane stove which can be used in the kitchen. I'm using my jam pan and we do have our safety carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide detector. Yeah, my portable. Carbon. Yes, and it will buzz if there's a problem. There has never been a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put a tablespoon of ghee in the pan. I love this pan. It's about my favorite pan. It has a really heavy bottom and so it does not usually burn unless the cook makes some errors. And then I'm also going to add a tablespoon of olive oil. And the mixture of those two in making pizza sauce, it is all about the quality of your ingredients. And so I use extra virgin olive oil and then this is real butter that has been made into ghee without the milk solids. So it is shelf stable without refrigeration for a really long time. And then in just a moment, I'm going to put a teaspoon of this minced garlic in. While the oils are warming up, I want to show you the tomatoes that I use. I'm pretty particular about, potato, about the tomatoes that I use for pizza sauce. I really like this brand, Cento. What I really like is San Marzano tomatoes by Cento, but we couldn't find them anywhere, so they're missing from the grocery store shelves. But I wanted to show you the thickness of this. These are diced, but you could also get whole, but look at this. It is in a nice thick layer of sauce, which makes it just excellent. You can see in the can, it's not watery. And so that's really important. Also important is the fact that I don't want those chunks in there. So regardless of whether I would be using whole tomatoes or these petite diced, I'm going to blend them up. Uh oh. So here goes the smoking now. So let me put in the teaspoon of garlic, diced garlic. 
while this garlic is sizzling just a little bit, I, I went ahead and blended the sauce, and now look at it. It's very different than it was before. Almost all the chunks are gone. There are still a few little ones, and that's just perfect. So we're going to let this sizzle for a second until these are these little pieces are a little bit browned. All right, so this these are nice and sizzly. So now we simply dump in the tomatoes. Now we're going to add some spices. So I'm going to set this off to the side just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. This is the oregano that I get from Italy. It is Calabrian oregano on the stem. And so you can see it's all right here on the stem. So I'm just going to squish this a little bit right here and cause some of those to fall to the bottom because I want two teaspoonfuls of this. And I'm going to unthread these so I can just have this. And I have cut a hole in the bottom because I've been using it a little bit. I will ultimately remove this to my spice cabinet in a different container, but right now I wanted you to see the packaging. Oh, this oregano, there's just nothing like it. It is wonderful. I'm going to carefully set that aside. And then I'm going to put in one teaspoon of basil. A little dab of salt. Dab is highly scientific terminology. And literally a pinch of red pepper flakes. I'm going to turn this down. Now we do not need to cook this to thicken it. Look how thick and beautiful that already is. But we are going to cook it for about 15 minutes so the flavors can blend, so those spices can release their flavors right into the pizza sauce. All right, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this small-ish onion and I'm going to cut it at the equator, as I call it. And that's it, one cut. And then I'm going to put the whole thing, both halves, down immersed in the sauce because I want the onion flavor I don't want the onion solids. And so we're just going to leave this like this on very low and let it simmer for about 15 or 20 minutes. Now when we, were, when we are done, it is going to look like this. This is an exact replica of exactly what we put together right here. And uh, this has been in the refrigerator overnight. I did this last night so I would have this to show you. It makes this much uh, pizza sauce. And uh, this is good for... It depends on how much, of course, sauce you like on your pizza. Um, if, if you really like a liberal amount, it will do two large ones. If you like um, sort of a thin amount, it will do three. It's about three cups. And so we have our choice here that we can refrigerate it as it is and take it on the trail just like this, which I don't do. 
or we could freeze it in a quart baggie flat so you can have several bags stacked on top of each other like that which would be very convenient you could have just the right amount that you would need for whatever you're going to make or what we're going to do today is to freeze dry so this plus this is not enough for my freeze dryer so we're going to go off camera and i'm going to make these other three cans right here into more sauce so when we come back I'm going to have a large pot of sauce that we will be ready to put into the freeze dryer trays. So we will be back shortly. All right, so this is four cans of the tomatoes made into sauce. And boy, is it just fantastic. Um, I have a little measurement scale on the inside and it says that I have just over three liters. Now I'm going to go ahead and add this one. It's cold, so it will help cool the rest of this mixture down, which is convenient because we're going to be putting it in the freezer in just a minute so now let's see okay we're just under four so that should be about right I know that these trays will hold about a quart of liquid so just under four liters is perfect um, then I here's how we do this um, we will not be pouring them in the house so what we'll do is we will put one tray down on a freezer shelf and then we just found these little corners that we absolutely oops, that we absolutely love we have tried several different mechanisms for separating the trays when we pre-freeze batches and so far these have worked the very very best I love these and then the next tray just goes right like that and then four corners all around and we'll fill this one and then put the corners in place and so on until we have stacked them four high filled with food. So here they are. And it, it's very space saving inside the freezer. And so then um, we'll go ahead and put these out there right now. It's about 6 p.m. in the morning at about 6 a.m. I will be moving them, moving them to the freeze dryer and I expect that it will take at least 24 hours or longer for these to finish. So it will be a couple of days before we come back to show you the finished product of the freeze dried sauce and then we will try it out to see if it reconstitutes into um, something that we can use on the trail. So I'm excited. I have high hopes for this. So we will see you in a couple of days. Well, we are back and it has been two full days. In fact, the um, pizza sauce was in the freeze dryer for 30 hours and here it is. It looks really good. I have not yet tasted it. Most of the trays, well, here are all four trays. This was the last tray we filled, so it was a little bit lower because we didn't quite have enough to fill it. I think I could have um, when making the sauce used a whole nother can of tomatoes, but this is a great start and this is our first um, Trial with pizza sauce, so let's see how it's going to do now. I don't think That it's always necessary to powder things and this is one of those that I'm not going to powder all the way I'm just going to put it in chunks and we're going to test those chunks right now to see how they do I'm going to put a couple of them. Well, I'll put three of them in this little bowl. And we want to see how they re rehydrate. This is one that we will want to use an exact amount of water, and I just guessed at that. So we'll let that soak up for a second while I put these others in. And these will be so easy to take on the trail just to load up whatever amount of cubes and I'm not I don't care if they break we're gonna have cubes and crumbs in these jars Alright, 
let's see freeze drying goes really fast oh my goodness these are done already so that was maybe about a minute and look at that it just looks perfect it looks just like it did before it was even freeze dried so i'm going to take a little taste you can't even tell that it has been freeze dried this is wonderful so this is a fabulous this is a fabulous success it is always very very exciting to figure out new meals that we can take on the trail but we're only half done we've got the sauce nailed the next thing we have to do is figure out what to do with the crust so i'm going to finish filling these jars and we'll come back when everything is done so that you can see the end result all right so i'm just we have three two quart jars full of pizza sauce is this exciting or what i'm now just going to vacuum seal the last lid on all right so we have three sealed jars these will go out in our food bank of freeze-dried foods ready for the trail this is the container size that we usually take things like this in when we uh, go on one of our trips how easy is it going to be to put the right amount of these little blocks in here to make up the pizza sauce that we will need to make pizza on the trail so i am thrilled i just told jim this is one of my all-time favorite things that we have freeze dried so far so the adventure continues and part two of making pizza will be our next video and we will um, figure out how to do the crust that we can take with us so we will see you at our next video and we really appreciate you watching this video please share and subscribe and share your trail stories with us as well so thank you so much and we will see you on the trail